Hi, I'm Jake. Hi, I'm Eliza, and welcome to Horse Rockets. Episode 3. Welcome to the Horse Rocket Studio in beautiful Bavaria. Before we start, we're going to say thank you to our audience. There are more than 1.5 million homeschoolers in America, and some of you have started to watch the show. We appreciate your viewership and we want to hear from you. Feel free to use the comments section on YouTube. We think you're worth thumbs up. <laughs> Feel free to use the thumbs up feature on YouTube to give us one if you think we're worth it too. And now it's time for the news. Hello, we have two stories for you in this episode. The first story comes from the state of Alabama. Legislators in the heart of Dixie are discussing a bill that will give homeschoolers a chance to play a public sports at the public school. Our next story is out of Washington, D.C., where the Department of Defense has found a way for homeschoolers to join the, art, the military. If you'd like to learn more about either of these stories, check out the show notes below the video. Public schooling has increased over 74% since... The Department of Education has start, started tracking in 1999. Many of the, these students have started out as toddlers and now are finding themselves knocking on doors of college admissions offices. Thankfully, homeschooling is more accepted now than it was 20 years ago. Uh, colleges and universities that used to reluctantly accept homeschooling students are now actively seeking them out. LearnInFreedom.org has more than 343 confirmed schools that homeschoolers have been accepted into. A quick Google search also shows the web how to apply pages for colleges such as Princeton, um, NYU, University of North Carolina, MIT, and Caltech. In this episode, we're going to talk to someone who's already done it. We're going to talk to Micah and her experience of transferring from a school a homeschool environment to a college environment. So, Micah, please tell us what school you're going to and what your major is and if there's a particular course that you're interested in or you really like. Um, right now I'm going to the University of Denver and I'm taking computer science. I'm majoring in computer science and doing my minor in Russian. I think Russian is the most fun course I'm taking right now because I'm really going to take language like that in high school. It's kind of fun to learn. Can you describe what it's like from homeschooling experience and what it's now like to be in college? Well, homeschooling was a lot more flexible. I only had to go to school about four days a week, about three hours a day, and I could kind of plan where my vacations were going to be. And in college, it's like the schedule's a lot more difficult. It's a lot harder to get used to going to school at certain times and not being able to skip class all the time. And the courses are definitely a bit harder. A lot harder. <laughs> How about college life? I mean, that's the academic side, but how about college life? That's a lot different because in homeschool, you don't really have a life. You're kind of downstairs in the basement with your brother all the time <laughs> and your mom, and that's not very fun. But college is a lot, a lot more stuff to do. Keep um, your boys, right, Micah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Micah, what was the application process like for you? Um, what were some of the hurdles you had to go through being homeschooled as opposed to you know, uh, being from a traditional high school, and then also, was there, what were the similarities? Because I know you probably applied to more than one school, right? Yeah, I applied to five different schools, and all of them, you had to fill out an extra application to go with the application, like a supplemental application. Okay. You had to write like two or three more essays and answer a bunch of questions about where you went to high school. I had to like fill out all my classes and stuff into sheets, like what, what grades I got in every single class and every single class I took, and the books we used in the classes. So there's a lot more work with the applications. And Some that, of the schools were easier than others. Okay. Um, how was the, the school that you ended up choosing, though? How was 
uh, how was that process for that school? Was was it easier or harder? And did that help influence your choice to go to? Um, um, I think the University of Denver's application process was a bit easier. You only had me write like one extra essay. There wasn't a whole other application. I think the University of Michigan and Georgetown had the hardest application. Okay. I don't think it affected my decision to go there. You just liked it anyway? Yeah. All right. What was the biggest draw with UC Denver? Uh, they gave me a scholarship. A lot of scholarships are sports-based. Yeah. So what's your scholarship for? Just academic stuff. GPA. So they give you an academic scholarship based upon what you were able to show them you did as a homeschooler? Yep. Wow. Now, have you met any other homeschoolers since you've been to school? I've met one other one. Okay, and have you guys compared notes on what it Not was like really. to find? Okay. No. So. Was it different to make friends in homeschooling than it is in college? Yes, it's very different. I didn't really make friends in homeschooling. I had like outside activities that I'd go to to meet friends and stuff and hang out. In college, you just meet people all the time. They're everywhere. A lot of, one of the myths out there is that homeschooling doesn't prepare you for college. Um, I know you can't speak for the entire homeschooling community, but has your homeschooling experience prepared you for college? Uh, and where, where has it done a really good job and where has it done just kind of an okay job? Well, my homeschooling, I did nothing but homeschool and online classes for the first three years. And then my fourth year, or my last year of high school, I went to the community college. Okay. So I was kind of prepared for the classes like that. I know other people do it where they just like do online classes the whole four years and then they get to college and they don't know anything about what's going on. I've heard right. about other people like that. But I think it just depends on what you do, like the type of homeschooling program you go through. Okay. So what, um, what type of homeschooling program did you go through growing up? I mean, I, you kind of described that last year as going to community college, but was it an unschooling program or a, like does it have a buzzword associated with it or was it just mom gave us books? And... Um, it was a program I think called Solmar Academy. We okay. changed like halfway through. I don't know what the first two years I did were. The last okay. one was Solmar Academy. It was a bunch of books and courses and stuff that we ordered online and then I took online courses too. Okay. Because um, what we found with our curriculum in our house is that uh, each kid kind of responds differently to different curriculums. So you have to match a curriculum with that sort of personality. Yeah. So, uh, the, are you the sort of personality that responded well to, to that curriculum? I think the answer is yes. Yeah, you know? I think so. Uh, and did you have to do any particular tests each year, like Iowa State testing or anything like that as you prepared and moved up in grade levels? Or what test did you have to take in order to get accepted in the school? I don't think we had to take any special tests in Hawaii, at least. There was no standards or anything to me that I know of. So just the general ACT or SAT? Yep. Okay. Like, who would you recommend for homeschooling? Does it render you from being socialized? Um, I just think, well, anybody can be homeschooled, but you have to kind of be motivated to get the work done because there's not like a teacher sitting over your shoulder all the time telling you what to do. And I think if you like engage in sports and stuff and outside activities, you can be socialized too. It won't like hold you back or anything. Like marker. Marker. <laughs> cool. This episode's homeschooling highlight is the Stone family. Diana Stone is a trained educator, wife of a soldier, an avid writer, snappy photographer, proud and humble mother, and a homeschooler. Diana isn't the sort of person to send out a half-baked opinion on a subject. She does write extensively. When she does write, her thoughts are coherent and sprinkled with creativity. When we asked her why she homeschooled, she pointed us to two of her blog posts, which we have linked below. Among the many reasons why she's chosen a homeschool were the successive mil moves demanded by a military lifestyle and religious reasons. She has a terrific post on religion and public education that's definitely worth sharing. It's an especially good read over a nice peanut butter cookie. Her blog has crafty and creative tips for homeschoolers and mostly preschoolers, including a terrific recipe for Play-Doh. We want to say thank you to the Stone family, and if you know anyone or you yourself want to be highlighted in a future episode, please feel free to contact us at horserockets at gmail.com. Well, that's the end of the episode. Thank you for watching. You're awesome. 
Yeah, if you want to help support the show, consider clicking one of the links below to Amazon when you make your next purchase. There's a percentage of your purchase that will be uh, gifted towards us and helps us with the production equipment we use in filming. You won't see it added to your price tag at all, but it does make a big difference to us on our end. Hey, again, Wise is absolutely right. We do appreciate you guys watching and hope you'll tune in for the next episode. See ya. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thanks, Outro music. Outro music. Like, that's the so intro music and then your outro. Okay, that's all. Alright, we're good. Thank you.